Hey y'all, Scott here. Big day if you don't have much going on. Microsoft and Sony have decided, out of the kindness of their hearts, they are releasing video game consoles. You heard it here third, video game consoles, that's video game consoles with a G in there somewhere, are launching to success, is what I'd say if you could actually buy them. Let's go to our Scott on the field. Scott? Scott, it's launch day of the brand new consoles, or as some video game fans have coined it, today. It's a big deal, taking into consideration all the video game console players out there, roughly 3% of the population cares. Many fans have expressed disdain in the limited supply of consoles, you can barely find any in store. Well, Scott, that's pretty crazy, did you nab any of the consoles? No. Okay. Uh, also, there's a tornado warning tonight, more on that tomorrow. Well, I did go to Best Buy, and they did have some of the new Xboxes left over, and... The names of these are getting so bad, I swear they named the last one this. For video game fans around the world, nothing's more exciting than the launch of a new console, ushering in a whole new generation of experiences. You have a completely new thing to put games in now. New game cases, controllers, menus, new entries in beloved franchises, new franchises entirely. See, we've been trained to expect these things when a system launches. It's the feeling of a new era dawning upon us that gets everybody going. And the launch, whether good or bad, is just a preview as to what's to come over the span of the console's life. That new generation smell is what makes console launches so great. The launch itself? It could be better. Console launches almost never go smoothly. There are almost always reports of faulty units, which are usually drastically overblown. Overheating consoles? Yeah, never happened to me, never will. Right. But you have a bunch of new products being produced for the first time ever. Some problems are going to arise. And the people buying consoles at launch are hard to please while simultaneously loving anything in a box. There's something about game console launches that make people think this is a worthy event to get your picture taken. Here's me buying the Nintendo Switch. And now where's the picture of me and my dad? These consoles mean a lot to people. Like this is going to be the gateway to some of the most engaging entertainment you'll experience for the next five years or so. These products have personalities and true differences in comparison to the competition, which brings passion to the purchase. It's a big deal when you finally get a new PlayStation or a new Xbox, because it's not just you buying a new system to replace the last one, this is you stepping into a whole new world. You don't see people posing with Rokus on launch day. People like having the badge of honor of being there from the very start, like they have what it takes to be a real fan. I called in sick at my uncle's funeral for this. It's almost a form of bragging to be there at the very start of a console's life. Oh, you bought a PS4 Pro in 2016? Why well, spend eight hours in the cold, lost my dog missed work and got syphilis just to buy a PS4 at launch in 2013, and I spent the next three years owning a console worse than the one you bought and paying full price for games you got for $5 in the clearance bin. And I'm better than you for it. Console launches are a magical moment that most take part in due to a lack of patience or to get a leg up on everybody else. Wow, this guy bought a Wii U at launch? Move over, Jesus. But it's mostly about the energy. When a new system launches, nothing else matters. That day is all about that console. I remember when the Nintendo Switch launched. Look at me. Brown hair and glasses. I, I was just a kid. March 3rd, 2017. I waited outside a GameStop in the cold, patiently waiting, and when that clock struck midnight, I really lucked out. Weird civil rights rally. I may have been at the wrong place at the right time, but that meant I got a Nintendo Switch at launch. I blacked out after that, awoke in the woods, and ran back when I realized I had no sex waiting for me at home. I got the gray model. Of course, when unboxing a console for the first time at launch, you say one of two things. It's way it's smaller, smaller than, than I, I thought, thought it would, would be. be. I do quite value a premium unboxing experience, where the packaging feels made specifically for the product. It's like Nintendo is proudly presenting a squirrel they killed in my backyard. I like the unboxing experience with this console. It felt like Nintendo gave a sh**. See, look at this cardboard. That's nice cardboard. When vanilla flavored cardboard is used, it feels like I'm unboxing power tools. But then it's time for the setup, getting to know your new console, experiencing the new sound effects and user interface. I can't wait, this is gonna be amazing. Boom, yes, I spent $300 to have my TV display this image. If only my Switch was defective. Now it's a console launch. You call off work, skip school, just have a day between you and the system of your dreams. And a console launch isn't complete without video games to play, and the Nintendo Switch had game. Let's see, I picked up The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild for the Nintendo Switch, God damn it. One Two Switch was the other big launch title from Nintendo, and I grabbed Super Bomberman R with some downloadable games, Snipperclips, Fast RMX, and Shovel Knight. 
I had two thirds of all Switch games at launch. It surely wasn't a ton of games, but they definitely went for quality over quantity here. I think all games held some value. Super Bomberman R was a little stinky, like it was Bomberman, which was good, but it lacked a lot of polish. One Two Switch was a fever dream everybody forgot even happened, but at the very least, it was a showcase for what the new controllers could do. Yes, a tech demo. You always want something to prove the worth of the useless bullshit thrown into your console at launch, but One Two Switch was $50 sold separately. I just like spending $50 to justify spending $300. But none of the games here were bad. Nintendo was laser focused on making sure the Nintendo Switch had good games available, not a lot of games. What a f up world 2017 was how dare they obviously breath of the wild was the key to the launch here and that shut everybody up for a good few months that launch window was spent playing hours of breath of the wild trying bomberman and one two switch for a few minutes going back to playing hours of breath of the wild those launch moments with any console feel so much more intimate like this is your console not the world's you're one of the select few to own it at the moment there aren't a ton of games so you have this great understanding of the library it's a weirdly fun feeling even though there may not be a ton to do with the system at the moment. Slim pickings for games at the time, but they launched with the only game that really mattered here. Not a perfect launch, but I had a good time with it. It was cool to keep swapping between the console and the TV and taking it out and going, oh, I can play here and here and here. The game boxes were way smaller, smaller than, than I, I thought they would be. be. People had issues putting on the Joy-Con straps. If you line them up incorrectly, you have something to complain about online. Of course, there was also the great Nintendo Switch cartridge tasting phenomenon. Somebody discovered that each of these game cards had an incredibly better taste to them. Well, that's one point against the Switch. The PS4 was great with this stuff. It's fine. I don't know how this even became a thing people started doing. Like, yeah, it tastes bad. A bitter coating is here to probably prevent people from putting them in their mouths and swallowing. But is there any standard to how a cartridge should taste? Oh, the, the, the DS cards. See, those taste okay. See, nothing else beats an experience like that one where nothing else in the world matters. All that matters is that there's a new video game device coming out that day. Of course, the Nintendo Switch is the only console I fully bought at launch. I did show up for the Xbox One X. I made it, and three hours of despair. At the wrong store. Most of the time you have to pre-order the console to get it at launch, and I'm just not willing to make that commitment for something not launching with one, two, switch. But it makes me think, what would it be like if I bought some consoles at launch? Where would I be today if I bought a PlayStation Vita day one? The PS Vita launched on February 22nd, 2012. Kidding. The handheld released one week early with the first edition bundle, and then it officially launched on the 22nd. The first edition bundle was 3G enabled, came with a carrying case, memory card, the game Little Deviant, so if you wanted to get your hands on the Vita first and have the rest of the games come out a week later, here you go. Woo! What a way to make your launch just the most damn thing I've ever seen. What does this mean? Like some Vita games came out a week earlier alongside the first edition bundle, but the system officially launched on the 22nd? No, it didn't. It came out on the 15th. How is that not the official launch? That just ruins a lot of the excitement. Just blow it all out on the same day. Man, I totally bought the Vita at launch. I swear. I waited up there at midnight, picked up the first edition bundle, but do you ever have that fear? You just got this expensive thing you really wanted and on the way from the store to the parking lot, you're worried that somebody's gonna steal it from you or you're gonna drop the box and it's gonna break. That happened to me. Oh. Oh. Hundreds of dollars wasted, worst launch ever. But what about the PlayStation 4? I didn't buy this one at launch. I waited until 2015 to buy this one. There was a deal where you'd get a download code for The Last of Us Remastered, and I spent the entire day downloading the game. But then, a week later, I decided to buy my very first official PS4 game. It was Grand Theft Auto V, which I already owned for the Xbox 360. I spent my gas money on that. The Wii U. Imagine if I bought that on day one. In 2012, I would have pre-ordered pre the white one, one and they would say, oh, that's got such a nice guy for buying a Wii U. Here's one on the house. Imagine if I got a 3DS at launch, an Xbox One, an Atari 7800. Some launches are 100% better than others. I mean, what are you really playing during the launch of the PlayStation 4? Killzone Shadowfall? Because you really wanted to play Killzone Shadowfall? I bought the Nintendo 3DS the day it got a price cut, a few months after its initial launch. Look at this original box. Why show the 3DS closed like this? Is that really the most iconic 3DS image they could have used? Why not show it open? Show the screen is 3D. Instead, that's all in the back. They're acting like the 3DS is like a really nice fork. A new dimension in entertainment. 
Just say it can play Rayman 3D. The Wii U at launch? Oh man, we got the deluxe digital promotion on the deluxe model. That's begging to get the question. What's that? You would get Nintendo eShop credit the more you'd buy digital games. It was great. Not a fan of multiple SKUs at launch though. Like, look at the PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 5 Digital Edition. I saw the Digital Edition on sale and thought, well, I can't find the regular one, so maybe. No, just wait to get the version you want. The same thing with the Wii U. I'm sure many wanted the deluxe set, but could only find the basic set at launch. Well, they might as well get the basic set. Who knows how hard the deluxe set's gonna be to find. Yeah, it's a mass-produced video game console. You gotta get the one you don't want because who knows how many they'll mass-produce. The people buying consoles at launch are the hardcore fans who have hundreds to blow at that very moment. Which hardcore fans are gonna say, eh? I want the shitty one. Introduce the more casual SKUs later down the line. It just annoys me at launch because I want a specific one, but can never only find the lame one. The Wii U was so damn slow at launch. Like everything took forever to load and plus half of the features of the system weren't included out the box. You had to perform a day one update. Now that's a standard these days. We're all used to that. But for Nintendo fans in 2012, I was expecting to see the rapture before a Nintendo system needing a day one update. At least you had such launch titles as Epic Mickey 2, Your Shape Fitness, Fun Funky Barn. You know, the only one I don't own is Funky Barn. Now, how do I know what it was like to experience the Wii U launch without buying a Wii U at launch? Well, I watched from afar. It's fun to take in all the reviews, impressions, footage from game console launches, even if you're not too interested in owning the thing at the moment. A console launch, regardless of if you bought the console or not, is like Christmas morning. Not only because most take place around the holiday season, but because it's this huge barrage of new things to experience. How does that new controller stack up? Where's the instructions? What do the Wii U discs feel like? Oddly soft. But that's modern console launches. What about the stuff from a few more years back? Oh god, it seems so scary to wait out for the PlayStation 3 and Wii. There was this level of madness for those two consoles that I'm not sure will ever be replicated. People were legitimately camping out with me doing the unthinkable. Buying multiple to sell for a profit on eBay. Ladies and gentlemen, we found the eighth sin. And then going back even further to older console launches, in the 90s, some of these consoles, it wasn't much of a countdown. Kids would just walk into the store and if they saw the Super Nintendo, well, it's out. As time has moved on, the console launch has become one of the biggest moments of any generation, as it's usually the first moment of any generation. And then right when the new console launches, does anybody look at the previous generation with disgust? Like, ah, oh, I don't wanna play that. It's too new to be nostalgic or retro or novel, but it's too old to be legitimately exciting or fun to think about playing. Sure, the games at launch may not be the greatest. You have the rare defects that come with the first run of systems, and most of your day is probably gonna be filled with the pure excitement that comes from playing with this new toy for the first time, it can't be matched. Opening up that box and seeing the future. I almost feel like I need to unbox these consoles in a certain way. Like, oh, I gotta save the system for last. I gotta check out the controller first. I have to keep all the bubble wrap and plastic in the correct pockets. What if I wanna play dress up and put the console back in the box just for fun? This is what makes video games as a medium so much fun. Not only is it fun to play the games, but everything around them is such a blast to do. And that all comes together when a new system comes out. So why do I not give a shit about the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X? Because I couldn't pre-order them! I wanted them, honest to God, but I was busy thinking about what it would be like to own them. Damn it!